I'm with Justin Brown, who is the founder of IdeaPod. I'd like you to tell us, for people who are not familiar with IdeaPod, first, um, what your initial idea was, and it's grown and evolved a lot over the years. So tell me what the initial premise was and how it's evolved to what it is today. Okay, yeah, thanks, Melissa. It's so good to be here with you. So IdeaPod is a media platform sharing ideas and perspectives for a new generation of people. It's got a strong focus on spirituality and self-development. So it really looks at the ideas that make up who we are, the concepts, the collective beliefs, and the relationship that we've all got in terms of our personal experience of life with these collective concepts. Um, it started as a very different platform a long time ago, back in 2014 in New York City. We launched it as a social network for ideas. You came and very easily shared an idea. So for about four years, we built that up and had a fair bit of success, some interesting people using it, people meeting on the platform, collaborating. But ultimately, it didn't have a sustainable business model in place. So we ended up needing to to reformulate you know, who we were and what we were offering. So we kind of brought it back to being a much more simple media platform with a blog, uh, creating a lot of articles. And long story short, over the last five years, while that was bringing things back down to earth a little bit, that's what's ended up growing and building an audience, building a community, uh, much more around the uh, the ideas shared by us as the editorial team. But we're just now bringing back in that original spirit of IdeaPod because we're launching a few new tools for people to come to IdeaPod and share their own perspectives with the world. When you first started out in 2014, did, did this sort of evolve as you evolved? Were you into spirituality and personal development and all that back then? Or have you grown and it's sort of shifted with you? Either Either you caused it to shift or it caused you to shift? So it all began when I had a co-founder back then who was really involved in the business and he was heavily into the law of attraction. As I we all no were, 20 percent think everyone was. <laughs> I, I had no idea what it was. And he was like, you have to watch this Esther Hicks on YouTube. Uh, she's amazing. And uh, this is what's going to allow us to take this business to the next level. So I was like, okay, I, I started you know, watching the YouTube videos and and I, I really started embracing it and starting to do my best to align my thoughts with the, the grander big picture vision that we had for the platform. And so that's probably when I started to you know get really interested in Put these your toe in things. The, the pools. You know what I call uh, it Abraham Hicks kind of the uh, the gateway to spirituality. It sort of starts with a westernized, <laughs> like materialistic approach, but then there's some stuff that makes sense. So it is kind of a gateway totally. drug. Yeah, for me, it was, it was more than dipping my toe in. Like I went <laughs> all, all in. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So yeah, I mean, yeah, long, long story short, that probably contributed to some of the issues that we ended up having where I, I feel like there are a lot of good things that came from it in terms of getting motivated, thinking of goals, formulating them, trying to get somewhere. And that was really motivating. That was the great part of it, always thinking positively and things like that. But inside the business, there were a lot of problems, you know, coming in with the way we were managing it. Uh, the products had a lot of issues. We, we ended up having this perspective where we were just ignoring a lot of those problems. And then at a personal level, it was pretty much the same thing. Like you, you, you get a lot of energy, a lot of like focus from it. But ultimately, if you don't sort of connect within and, and deal with some of these issues below the surface, you're, um, you're not going to get that far. Well, it's not sustainable, number one, and it's also not a authentic. At some point, you realize the work is about actually honoring every part of yourself, mind, body, spirit. You were talking about um, a collective consciousness when you started. I find that a very interesting topic because I think the collective consciousness now, without many people realizing, is being dictated by social media and everyone's saying each other's brainwashed, but we don't realize we've all been brainwashed. So can you talk about that a little bit? The reality is that we've all got belief systems in place and we can't really interact with the world without a belief system. And it can be as simple as believing that gravity is always going to operate the way it does or understanding the way traffic laws operate in your local area. And that's how you get by. Uh, but then it goes right through to uh, shared concepts that we've got about politics, human rights, um, what freedom may mean in one context as opposed to a different context. 
uh, how we should all respond to things like coronavirus, where there's a whole different set of values in place and different beliefs that emerge from that about what's appropriate. So they, they, these are all um, you know, belief systems and it's totally natural to have them. So we end up just looking at, well, what, what are the collective belief systems in place? Like, how do we how do they shape our understanding of who we are and what's going on? And um, in this world, and get back to your question, uh, we're, we're all connected with each other through communication technology or social media. And there's a, there's, there's a few things. So the things that go viral are based upon what we already believe, but it also then has a powerful impact on shaping the possibilities that we see before us. So we all end up in this world of, of propaganda, a lot of collective belief systems in place, some of which is effective and useful and others you know, where we need to learn how to think for ourselves and, and to question a lot of things that we're seeing online. A self-development thing just popped in my head as you were talking, sort of the, the repetition of you're shown something and then you're shown more of the same thing on social media. That kind of bias actually shows up in your life. You, know, you have a belief and yeah. you, you have an experience and you see that and then you see more of that, whether or not that's the objective reality of it. So that was just an interesting thing that popped into my head as you were talking. Tell us about, um, I don't like the word guru, mentor is, is, and I also don't know how to say his name correctly, Ruda Lande. Huda Yande. Oh yeah, totally. So a, okay, with my New York accent, by the way. <laughs> Tell okay. us about who he is, how you met him, uh, how he's influenced your life personally, and then take that over to what he's doing with IdeaPod. Yeah, so um, Huda is a very good friend of mine now. I, I first met him in 2014 when I was living in New York City. So he's a shaman from Brazil, and he was visiting and doing sort of body work sessions with people. Oh. And he was recommended to me by my co-founder at the time. And so I went and and you know met him and found his work to be really interesting and over a period of time, he ended up joining the IdeaPod team uh, and, and helping us you know, move forward. And it, it was really, he was one of the key people, along with a couple of others that helped wake me up to the reality of what was happening inside IdeaPod. And he helped me to become much more grounded with my own spirituality right through to just, just practical reality, ensuring that uh, the goals for the business were realistic, attainable, wow. were moving us forward but also at a personal level that these goals were coming from a much more authentic place. Mm -hmm. So he, he was hugely influential in my life. And you're right to refer to him not as a guru, but much more as a, a mentor, a, a friend, because his whole approach is all about helping people become the guru of their own life, that mm. the center of authority always exists within. And when we have gurus, we end up quite naturally placing them in these positions where it's their concepts that shape our understanding of reality so he's very good at helping you get to that place where you're living life from that place so then uh that was all amazing and he was a big part of this transition to idea of becoming a media platform so together we were like the the teachings that, that you've been sharing with me and, and thousands of other people all around the world uh we need to share these with much more people mm. so that was the beginning of the online course out of the box and that's delivered by a partner website of IdeaPod, which is called The Vessel. That's where his teachings are contained, where there's a 16-week process that anyone can go through to understand who they really are deep down inside, to understand all of these different concepts that come from parents, religion, culture, education, politics, whatever it is, but understand the way that shaped our lives up to this point. And just start to unravel that a little bit and, and just to reformulate many of these things so that you live life from that much more authentic, real and honest place. I think that's really exciting. And I think it's sort of crucial, especially where we are now in the world, that people really need to uh, both personally and globally realize how indoctrinated we really are. Again, it changes the way we show up in the world, but it also changes the way we view the world uh, as a whole. Do you think there is sort of a change in the air, a, a collective change in consciousness that is, is happening? We're focused so much on, on the bad things that are happening or the negative things that are happening. Do you think there's sort of an awakening, a mass awakening, for lack of a better term? I, I think, in my opinion, it's, it's a mistake to ever think that things will always stay the same. The other thing to note is that there's always a zeitgeist there's always a spirit of the times there's always a collective understanding at the big picture more fundamental level right through to the really basic stuff when you look back in history there was a time when we thought 
we all collectively agreed the world was flat. It took a long period of time, a lot of arguments and experiments and everything, but we ended up, you know, most people would say, well, it's probably <laughs> oval round, something like that. So things shift and change. So it's absolutely the case that in this current moment, when we're all so much more connected, sharing things at, at more, you know, speed, that there's something going on. There's some sort of process underway where we're coming together, where consensus is forming in some areas where there's fragmentation of collective beliefs at another. So the first thing I say is I think it would be a mistake to ever just assume that whatever we believe to be true today is what we're going to be believing to be true tomorrow. Is there hope for us? Is there hope for the, A, for the planet? Is the planet still going to exist, do you think? And is there hope for humanity? Oh, yeah. So that's, you'd have to ask people much more learned and <laughs> analytical than me. I got... All right. I'll let you off the hook there. Uh, last question. Your three favorite books, they can be spiritual, personal development, fiction, just your three recommended reading books. So the first one I'll say is Noam Chomsky's Manufacturing Consent. So it's written in 19, I think, 89. And he did an analysis of the media of the time, the way they function as propaganda systems to shape the way we think, believe and act in the world. And I think that his analysis there is completely appropriate for today and what's going on. I think it's just one of the, the real classics. What else is there? Uh, yeah, so the courage to be disliked. Yeah, I'm listening to that right now, actually. When, whenever I see it in the bookstore, I'll buy it and just give it to someone. Talk about that for people who don't know what it is. So it's, it's a self-development book. It's written as a dialogue between a philosopher and his student. It's a nice way to communicate these ideas. That The point of the courage to be disliked is that if you live your life according to what people want you to do, where you care so much about people liking you and approving you, you end up living your life for other people and not for yourself. The author really helps you understand that in a really elegant way that there's a separation of tasks in life where we've got the tasks being the things that I'm meant to do, the way I'm meant to behave, the, the value system I'm meant to arrive at on my own. These are my tasks. And we've got to understand that we separate these tasks from for example, the tasks of my parents, if they were to live their lives, you know, needing me to behave in a very certain way, that would result in, in a lot of unhappiness and also vice versa. I'd end up, if I didn't have the courage to disappoint my parents, mm. I'd be living a shackled life where I'm not really truly free. Okay, book number three that you'd recommend. Uh, so I've just finished 21 Rules for the, tw no, 21 Lessons for the 21st Century. That's okay. the exact title. <laughs> and it just goes through all of the big issues we face. Actually, Uval Harari would be a great person to answer your question of whether we're screwed or not. Emergence of AI, biotech, Right. A nuclear war, what's just going on, all of the threats that we face, environmental degradation, and just how, what's actually going on, so we really understand it, but also how we can think about these issues and, and what we can do in the face of them. Well, thank you for your time. Uh, what should people know about you, IdeaPod, where to find you, how to find you, all that good stuff? Oh, yeah, so ideapod.com is is the place to go. Uh, if you want to go to Instagram, I'm Justin R. Brown. That's where we've connected. So that's pretty cool. And that's pretty much it. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much.